Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at another interesting problem, like the infinite fraction we looked at before. That was a very ambiguous case and, you know, we've been discussing it in the comments section. So this problem is kind of like that one. When we solve the problem, you're going to see that there are some ambiguities, but we're going to be clarifying those in this video. So it's going to be a little different because I'm going to give you a definite answer at the end. So we do have something like this. We have the square root of 2 stacked up as exponents and there are infinitely many square root of 2's. Of course this needs to be well defined and I'm going to give you kind of like a sequence definition for this one or at least while solving this problem you're going to see what I'm doing. So when you have a problem like this it's pretty much the same thing if you have you know nested square roots that are infinitely many that are added, multiply, whatever we pretty much have the same type of approach all the time. We call this expression x or some other variable, doesn't really matter, it's a matter of choice. But I'll, I'll call this x and then proceed with the solution. Let's go ahead and call this x. Now what does that imply? So as you know, based on the order of operations here, we're not talking about something like this. When I say square root of 2 to the power square root of 2 to the power square root of 2, obviously I'm not talking about this, but I'm talking about this. So this should be taken as the exponent. And of course, it's true for all these powers. We don't use parentheses. We could have, but that would make it look messier. So I, I try to avoid that. So anyways, when you call this x and look at this carefully, look at the exponent of square root of 2, the very base that we have, and look at this whole expression right here. And you're going to notice that when you look at it, it just goes like this, square root of 2 to the power square root of 2 to the power square root of 2, to the power of square root of 2, so on and so forth. Goes on forever, right? I know some of you are going to be upset because I didn't well define this, but that's okay. We'll, we'll clear this up. So now, what do you notice when I call this whole thing x? The exponent becomes x as well, right? So this is x as well. So this gives us a very simple equation, actually. Well, kind of simple, but the outcome is not that simple or the consequences. So you can write it as square root of 2 to the power x equals x. Simple, right? Well, sort of. Well, first of all, it's not that simple because x is in the exponent as well as in the result. So this is not a standard type of equation. One of the things you can do, though, is you can make a graph, right? Obviously, I'm not going to include the graph here, but you can definitely make a graph, and I could probably include a link here for the graph of it. But you can take a look at the graphs and see where they meet. But let's go ahead and try to guess our way. And some people, again, don't like guessing and checking, but that's a problem-solving strategy whether you like it or not, okay? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to try to guess a possible solution here. Well, if square root of 2 to the power x equals x, then x can be 2. Why? Because square root of 2 squared equals 2. So 2 works. Great. But is 2 the only number that works? And this is where the ambiguity starts. Okay. Well, 2 is not the only number. Let me tell you that. 4 also works. Why? Because if you square both sides here, this is kind of interesting, you take this and you square both sides, obviously you're going to get a true statement, and this gives you square root of 2 to the fourth power equals 4. Isn't that crazy? You get something that is true, you square both sides, and then, well, not only that, of course it's going to be true, but look at the exponent and the result. So we get the same number. Isn't that crazy? You get a 4 and a 4, you get a 2 and a 2, which means that x equals 4 is also a possible solution or a candidate, right, at least. So we kind of have to clear this ambiguity. So what is the problem? Remember our fraction, uh, and I'll also link that video down below, 3 minus 2 over 3 minus 2 over dot, dot, dot. Here, there was some confusion because how do you define this sequence and is this 1 or 2? We got two answers from this, remember? So it's kind of a similar situation. But for this problem, we're, we're, going, we're going to take a closer look. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, first of all, you can list some of the terms to get an idea. For example, what is square root of 2 to the power square root of 2? You can use a calculator to evaluate that. And obviously, you're going to agree that this is going to be greater than square root of 2. Is that right? Let's take a look. Because this type of observation will be helpful in our solution. So I can safely say that this is greater than square root of 2 because this is square root of 2 to the power 1. And square root of 2 to the power x is going to be an increasing function. That is actually an exponential function, right? Just like 2 to the power x with a little different curve, but it's pretty much the same idea. For x equals 0, it's 1, and it's going to increase, so on and so forth. So that means when the exponent increases, the number, the result is going to increase. 
So we can safely say that what is that supposed to tell you that the, our answer is going to be greater than root 2. But guess what? Both 2 and 4 are greater than root 2. Okay, so how do you distinguish between them, right? And you can continue to do this. So for example, you can safely say that, hey, if I raise square root of 2 to the power square root of 2 to the power square root of 2, then obviously this is going to be greater than square root of 2 to the power square root of 2, right? Because this number is greater than that number, obviously. And we can use the same argument. So what is that supposed to tell you? Well, this is greater than square root of 2. That doesn't really help much. But notice that our numbers are getting larger and larger. Of course, this is not a proof. I'm just showing you that the terms will increase, right? You agree with that? Okay, let's go ahead and go into more technical details here. So here, I'm going to define this as kind of like a sequence. So I'm going to say, okay, suppose I have a n, and a n is basically a tower with n square root of 2's. So we're going to make a tower like this, square root of 2 to the power square root of 2 to the power square root of 2. And if you have this n times, then that's going to be my a n. That's how I define a n, okay? Cool. So for example, what is a 1? a 1 means you're only going to use the square root of 2 once. That's going to give you square root of 2. What is a 2? a 2 is going to be square root of 2 to the power square root of 2. You can evaluate this again using Wolfram Alpha or any other calculator or Desmos, whatever. doesn't matter. And then a3 is going to be square root of 2 to the power square root of 2 to the power square root of 2. So, first of all, my claim is that all these terms are going to be less than 2. Okay? So that's my claim. Let me rewrite it for you. My claim is that a n is less than 2 for all n. Now, how do you prove something like this? You, have a, you make a general claim. Well, I'm going to use induction, mathematical induction. So here's what I'm going to do. First, we're going to build our base case, and we already have it. So our base case is going to be a1. As you know, square root of 2 is less than 2 because 2 is square root of 4, right? That's hopefully clear. Now, what am I going to do is my inductive, uh, to be able to prove this by induction, we're going to look at the case where n equals k. So if n equals k, then what happens? And I have to assume that, assume that this case is true. For n equals k, my statement is true. And what is my statement? I have a k is less than 2. Okay, for all k greater or equal to n. Now, and this should imply something. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at a of k plus 1. Now, by definition, by definition, you can safely say that a of k plus 1 is basically you're writing the square root of 2k plus 1 times, right? But if you go ahead and take k of them, that's going to give you square root of 2 to the power a k, right? Because this is a k. Look, you have k root 2s stacked up. So in other words, this is root 2 to the power a k. And what do we know about this? Well, our assumption was that a k is less than 2. So if k, a k is less than 2, we can do square root of 2 to the power both sides here. And that gives us square root of 2 to the power a k is less than square root of 2 to the power 2. Notice that here a k is less than 2. The exponents are arranged that way so that when you change the base, you know, you use, different, you use the same base, it's going to work. So what is that supposed to imply? This means that this is equal to 2, obviously. This implies that a k plus 1 is less than 2. Notice that what happened was, if we assume that a k is true, a k is less than 2, implies a k plus 1 is less than 2. That means that our initial case, of, co of course the base case is true, that means it's true for k equals 2, k equals 3, so on and so forth. This proves that proof is complete here by mathematical induction. So the result is a n is always less than 2 for all n greater than or equal to 1. And again, a n is n root 2's stacked up in exponents. Okay, so this tells you that our expression is less than 2. Therefore, when we take the limit as n approaches infinity of a n, this cannot equal 4. Therefore, it has to be 2. So in other words, the result is going to be then, you, if you stack up all these root 2's infinitely many times, it is going to equal 2 and not 4. Even though there are two cases, 4 cannot be the answer, it's way too large. 
And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.